All right, the time has come. I'm finally getting started on the turbo kit. I got a blown up 5.3 from out back. Bolted some junk heads on it that we had laying over here. Actually, they're not junk, I think they're awesome. But either way, uh, bolted the heads on it, bolted an actual motor in there because I didn't want to do my hot side and stuff with the mock-up block in there because it's so short. I don't really have any leeway or anything if it's just off a little bit. Uh, I talked to Ron earlier. He said that the heads that I'm going to be running, the port height is the same as a stock head. So that was my main concern with that. But it's the same. So I, uh, I already knew kind of what I wanted to do. I wanted to come back and then go up and in the turbo. That's why I kind of made the headers where they were at. Um, and it turned out really good. So I got... I got a 120 here that I had to cut a whole lot out of. You know, I really had to get into the radius and kind of, it's kind of oblong. You can see I'll have to fill a little gap right there, but it makes it nice and smooth. Kicked it back with the 30. I tried to get another angle that already had a stub on it, but I, I just couldn't get it right. So I ended up having to put a little piece in there and I hate doing that. And Jason from 10 Soldiers and Brad always give me crap for doing it, but man, this thing fits so freaking good. You literally, I can tell my turbo's a little unsturdy, but this thing just pops right in there. Look at that. We got no gap or oozkies. I guess there's a little gap there, but that'll feel real nice. Flanges feel easy. Um, I'm getting ready to start. I'm getting ready to start on the cold side. I don't really know what I want to do yet. I got have an option to come down right here and come along here and kind of kick back in and into there uh, or I can also do this take this off real quick Also do this. And also kick it down there and come down around and up in here, which I think would look a little cleaner, but with how I'm gonna have to go out and around this for now instead of just kicking this down, when I take this tank out when I go no preparation, because you know this tank is just for uh, sick week and drag and drive events. I'm gonna have this weird little concoction of tubing and it'll just kind of look out of place. So I think, although I really like the way this looks with this setup, to get something that's more dual purpose, I think I'm gonna go out and around here and I'm, I'm gonna kick it in to where it angles in so that way when I do change these shocks, my, my cold, cold side is not in the way. So yeah, I got that hot side mocked up. My other mock-up turbo shipped out today, Robert said. Um, so, depending on how far I get on this cold side and this hot side, if I get to the point where that's all done, I may actually take this turbo off where it's at, uh, knock the bung off, because the bung I welded on the hot side just tacked on. I might knock that off, take the turbo over here, um, mount this one over there, do the hot and cold side over there so I'm not waiting on the other turbo. Um, and all that. I ordered uh, another flange for my downpipe from Race Parts Solutions. Uh, yeah, so hot sides mocked up. Once I get a downpipe mocked up, after I do the downpipe, then I'll do the wastegate. But I'm not going to do the wastegate until I do the downpipe. So that way I get the downpipe exactly where I want it. Uh, so for now, hot sides mocked up. I'm going to start on the cold side. I think I decided I'm going to go on the outside on the top just for more symmetry and not more dual purpose like i said so i'm gonna get started on that so i found a tight radius 90 that i had i cut it at a 60 and it actually fits it literally puts that tube exactly where i want it so i'm going to now uh i'm gonna clamp this on there and then fit up i think this is a 30 and it's almost a 90 degree angle. So that's a 30, this is here. So I only need a 60 left. Fit up a little piece in between there and I, literally this cold side's already done. All right, so I just cut this 60 
it just barely, barely is just a little too much. So I'm actually getting ready to take a little bit off with my hefty homemade uh, bandsaw that uh, my dad gave me the bandsaw. Me and Moon, actually, I designed this table. Moon cut it, made it, all that. So that way we turn this awesome horizontal saw into a big vertical bandsaw and saves $3,500 instead of buying an own and room. <laughs> see I literally just barely took some angle off so I didn't actually I didn't take any off the top I started here and started cutting at more of an angle to where I ended up at just a little maybe right at an eighth of an inch at the bottom so that way I took just a little off and now I can clean that up on my Harbor Freight belt sander and hopefully that's the exact angle that I need as you can see I now have a perfectly flat piece. When in doubt, sand her out. I cannot like stress the importance of a belt sander when you are fabricating because no matter how good the saw, how good your eyeball is, it's like nothing, nothing ever comes out perfectly straight. And I bet the most used tool in our shop is that bell sander. I bet it's got the most run time, run hours of any tool here. It's amazing, I love it. I was right. That was literally just enough to get enough angle out of that to make it perfect. So now what I do is I'm gonna hold that with both hands, mark it, tack it, mark it, tack it. And then this cold side, this side is mocked up and it's done. One thing to always remember, when you're tacking, if you tack here, uh, you tack here, and those two tacks give you a gap here, you need to tack the gap. Because if you do not tack the gap, you're gonna leave two tacks there, you're gonna have a gap somewhere, you're gonna fit the whole rest of your cold side together, and then when you finish weld this thing, you're going to weld it around and it's going to draw really bad. And then it's not going to fit when you're done welding. Or, yeah, after you get done welding, this piece will not fit. So, always tack the gap. Try, try to, you, you might have just saw me, I tried to push on it and tack it at the same time. Um, for one, tight fits always weld better. For two, if you have a gap and you don't tack it, or you don't just try to weld it out right then bef before you fit the rest of your pipes, you're gonna have issues with fitment when it comes to final install. It's all tacked together. I like it a lot. Uh, especially once you get the other side done, it's gonna be very satisfactory. So I'll probably stand here and stare at it for quite a while, maybe drink a beer, do some more imagining maybe take it off and weld it, but here it is. Nice and smooth, sets right on the bar. So that way, actually it doesn't even actually touch. Either way, there's some adjustments we can probably set it down so that way it's got some support. Won't be jangling around, but that's it, boys. Once I get the other side, come down, go right in. Other turbo will be up, so it's gonna have to 90 really hard. But I think I like it. So I'll probably call it a night. It's almost midnight now. This side, cold side's done, or tacked up, mocked up. Hot sides mocked up. Down pipe's gonna come down. Out there, maybe some mini bull horns, waste gates right there. Gotta make plug wires tomorrow. Adam's gonna start on wiring or keep going on the wiring. Austin's gonna help him a little bit. Should make a lot of progress tomorrow. 
So that's it for today, tonight, this morning. I don't know. But it's been a good one, boys. Tomorrow, we'll keep on keeping on. 035 boys, 48 amps, 065 wall. I use 035 on the uh, on the butt joints and then I use 045 on the flanges. I like to take mine after I weld a few spots. Notice how I spread the heat out. Get yourself a nice fan. Cool your part down before you keep welding or else it's gonna get pissed off real quick. It's been a long day so far, but we've got a crap ton accomplished. Uh, I think it's like six or seven now. Um, Adam and Austin both were tackling the wiring. Um, Scotty was even here for a little bit. He did wiring on my front end with turn signals. Austin was tackling the tail lights. Adam was in here tackling the main wiring. Uh, I got the cold side welded. Cold side's completely welded. Looking good. Cold side's welded. Hot side is welded. Now I just gotta do the wastegate. Wastegate. once I get the downpipe done. Like I said, lots of progress. This whole side of the turbo kit is 75% done. Just got to uh, wastegate downpipe, blow off. I think since my other turbo's not here for the weekend, um, I might just take this one off, mount it over there. That way, hopefully tomorrow, I can knock out this side's cold side and hot side, and then we'll really be in business. So, like I said, steady progress every day. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel, still a lot of work to do, but we're just knocking stuff out left and right. That feels good. Starting on the driver's side downpipe. Got this, and I got an aluminum flange here. So basically what I'm doing is taking and making this sit against the fender right here I'm gonna trace that out cut a hole and then boom bull horn off that so that way I cut my hole kind of to where this four inch ends up because four inch is really hard to work with because of how long the radius is and how big the tube is so it's easier to run your tube kind of where you want it then cut your hole then everything's super close instead of just cutting a hole where you want it which, I mean, this is pretty much where I would want the hole anyway, so it worked out, but either way, cutting the hole where you want it sometimes kicks you right in the nuts because you can't actually physically get these radiuses to get there, so then you end up doing pie cuts and it looks stupid. Officially calling it a night again. Earlier I went in, ate some food. I watched Fast and the Furious, fell asleep, woke up, kept watching Fast and the Furious. And it just motivated me to come back out here. And that motivation turned into me getting this down pipe completely mocked up, boy. I love it. I'm honestly, I always think that I'm not a fan of bullhorns or not, just like big bullhorns. I always like like the mini bullhorns, but right now that that right there, it's hitting. It's hitting me right where it needs to hit, and I like it. Scratching that itch, so it's gonna stay like that for now. And 
Now the hard part comes is taking everything that just went so easily on this side, the hot side, the cold side, the downpipe, and trying to completely mimic it on that side. Because as you know, most turbos are not mirror image turbos. So it is the complete opposite, not the complete opposite. It is trying to do the complete opposite with the same turbo facing the wrong way. So that is the actual challenge. Getting the first one mocked up and all that stuff done, making it look good is easy, doing one. Making the second one look exactly like that and try to make everything symmetrical, that's where you run into some issues. So we'll see how that goes tomorrow or not tomorrow because uh, I'm gonna be working on other stuff tomorrow, but next week we'll see how that goes. But lots of progress today. I feel really good about it. I'm very happy. I'm gonna sleep good tonight. I might even sleep in tomorrow. Probably not, because we still got a lot of work to do, but it was a good day.